Thank you. All right. Is there any better way to start anything than with a little prince? God rest his soul. So thanks so much. Uh, that was kind of a risk I took there. It actually worked. So, thank you very much. Um, I'd first like to say that it is quite an honor and a privilege to share the stage with everybody who's talked so far. Uh, they've been quite amazing, some amazing TED Talks. The dancers, the singers, what's going outside. So, I thank you very much for, for allowing me to kind of uh, say a few things today. Uh, my name is Joe Welch, and uh, I'm a German teacher, and I'm the Dean of Student Activities at Robert College. Uh, some of you who do DI might know me as the DI guy. Anybody here do DI? All right, so you know me as the DI guy. Uh, anybody ever go to RC Summer, summer program? Odin. You might know me as Odin. Uh, my boys know me as Daddy. My dog knows me as Riff. <laughs> but I'm hoping at the end of this little talk, you're going to know me as the happiest guy in the world. I, I hope. Let's see. Let's see. On paper, on paper, I should probably be the most miserable guy in the world. I'm a single parent. I've got two adolescent boys who want to go to college in the States, and their father has no money put away. Overworked, as all teachers are, right teachers, all overworked, underpaid. Uh, I reached middle age, middle age about two years ago. Uh, so mortality questions are also entering my head. So if you look at me on paper, <laughs> it's, life's a drag. Um, but I'm not going to let that get me down. I'm not going to let that get me down. Um, what I want to talk to you today a little bit about is, is an organization called Destination Imagination. And the tools that this organization and, and many co-curricular activities can give you that schools simply don't have the time to. And there's a mantra in DI, DI is short for Destination Imagination. It's, don't tell me I can't. And much, much earlier than, than when I first was introduced to DI, um, when I was in high school, many, many, many centuries ago, um, I took the ACT. I, you can still take that test, right? Yeah. Right, right. So I took the ACT, and I scored a 13. <laughs> Not good. I think you're supposed to like get 20-something to even be considered for college. I got a 13. And my college counselor came up to me and said, Joe, you're not college material. Do not go to college. You might think about the military. That's something you could do. And I thought for a second, I'm like, how dare you say something like that to a 17-year-old? That just dashed all of my hopes. But I kind of wore that as a chip on my shoulder. And I said, you know what? I'm going to prove this guy wrong. He's probably long gone now, but I wish you could see me here today. I'm actually doing a TEDx talk. Now, and I'm living in Turkey. And I'm teaching at a really cool school. I'm not making any money, but it's really cool. <laughs> All right? Um, and I'm happy. And I graduated from college. I'm a Fulbright scholar. I mean, you know, screw you, Mr. Man. So one of the mantras of DI is don't tell me I can't. Don't tell me I can't. Let me figure that out. Um, why did I play the song of, uh, uh, from Prince 1999? It's because that's when DI started. So there is kind of a connection. I'm also wearing purple. Purple Prince 1999. Um, and uh, before we kind of look at this slide, I want to go a little bit further. And I want to tell you a little bit about DI is all about. So, this nation imagination is the world's largest creative problem solving organization. Um, it basically sets up tournaments around the world, around the United States, around the world, whoever wants to participate, in which teams of anywhere from four or five to, to seven students get together and they solve challenges. There's two types of challenges. There's the instant challenge, which you're supposed to solve in four or five minutes. And then there's a team challenge that takes probably three or four months to complete. And um, 
you work on these challenges uh, throughout the year, and then there are tournaments that you go, and if you place in a certain place versus second place, you can go to the next level, and if you place well there, you can go to the next level. Um, but it's really not about the tournament. It's about everything else but the tournament. At least that's what I think. And the three main precepts of DI is creativity, creative problem solving, and teamwork. Basically, the, uh, DI says that we are all creative, and that um, that creativity might have been somehow uh, suppressed throughout our years of school or life, but that everybody is creative, and that creativity can be taught, it can be learned. And that's, I think that's very important, because some of us think we forget how creative we can actually be. And then you use that creativity to solve, creative, to solve problems, is to come up with solutions that you might not have thought about unless you tapped into that creativity. And then, of course, teamwork. And um, in most of the talks that I've heard today, uh, these precepts are all there. If you want to be a good entrepreneur, you need to be creative. You need to work with the team. Basel Bay was always talking about my team, my team, my team. And working with the team is really important. It's not easy, but it's very, very important. I'll give you one analogy of the creativity that we have and that we lose. When my oldest son, Benjamin, was about a year old, um, we bought him all sorts of toys, uh, thousands of tele worth of toys. But his favorite toy was a wooden spoon. And he would sit in the middle of the kitchen with a wooden spoon, and he would just sit there and play with it for hours. It was an airplane. It was a rocket. He used to scratch his back. He used to hit his brother with it. <laughs> he played the drums. That wooden spoon cost about 50 kurush in Emanunu. I wish I could have all the money back that we spent on all those toys that so, you know, so-called would, would teach your child something and just give him a wooden spoon or two. But somehow schools kind of suck that creativity out of us. They don't allow us to do that. And I'm a teacher, so I'm kind of like shooting myself in my own foot by saying our educational system doesn't provide everything that we need it to do. But you know what? Our educational system does provide a lot. And the analogy I use for that is, is a house. Think of a house. A house is made up of floors, walls, doors, door jams, a roof, a basement. And that's really what our school does. Sciences, math, languages, history, sociology, economics, PE. Right? That is our house. But when you have guests coming over to the house, what do they see? Do they walk into the house and say, well, that's a Pretty neat looking floor you got there. I was looking at your roof. Wow, oh, awesome roof. Your basement? Man, is that a great basement. They don't, they don't talk about the walls, but that's, that's the school. That's what the school provides. When they come into your house, what they see is the furniture, the paintings on the wall, the great setup you have in your kitchen. And that's what things like DI and junior achievement and debate and, and all these co-curricular activities can do. They are the things that people are going to comment on. Those are the things that people are going to find beauty in. Those are the things when they walk out of your house, they're going to go, I want a couch like they have. And that really is what organizations like DI can do. DI, you cannot hang up a painting without a wall. You need the wall. And that's what school will do. But that painting is what's going to, what's going to make that wall beautiful and come to life. So, I talked to you a little bit about DI. There's a few more things. We're going to get to the failure thing in a second. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about how DI got started in 1999. Um, I introduced it to Robert College as a club. DI didn't exist in Turkey yet. It was the first year that it was in existence. And I opened it up as a club in, at Robert College. And about 12 kids signed up for it. And we started working on the challenges. And after about six weeks, the kid said, oh, we can't do this. Uh, I, I really don't know. Can we watch a movie? And so the club became Creative Movie Watching Club. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I guess that's what we'll do. We gave it a try, but you know, we'll try it again next year. So I opened up a club the next year. Exact same thing happened after about two months. It became Creative Movie Watching Club. And then the third year I offered it, nobody signed up. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? Is it me? Do I smell? Do the kids want to hang out with me? What's going on? The fourth year, finally, 
seven Lee Say Nine boys were able to finish their team challenge. They had been working on it for three or four months. Actually, they worked on it for about two weeks, if you know what I mean. Yearly homework projects? Are they really yearly homework projects? Or are they weekend before their due projects, right? So <laughs> they got a project done. And because, because we were the only team in Turkey, we got an automatic invitation to the global tournament. And the kids were like, let's go to the States. Yes, we're going to go to Globals. I'm like, guys, you haven't done anything yet. And they're like, we don't care. We want to go. So they almost got their project done about a week before we were to go to Knoxville, Tennessee, where the, the global finals were. And three of the boys weren't able to go because it's pretty expensive. So I took four boys to the global tournament. And the first time they got their water-powered machine to move a little bit, um, it, was, it was basically the day that they had to give their presentation. The only time the project worked is when they actually did it on stage. And it was a mess. It was a complete failure. We came in dead last place. And from the years that I had been working in Turkey, failure doesn't go over well. Uh, there's a sense of humiliation that comes with failure. And a lot of people sitting in this room, you're, you're at Ebolo, you're at Robert College, you're at, at, at some of the best schools, and you had to succeed to get there, right? You had to do well in the Teog, or whatever they're calling Yege Say, or all those kind of things. And so you've been successful, and that's why you're at where you're at. And so I was for sure thinking that these kids would just go, hold their heads low, not want to talk about it, and say, you know what, D.I., it was cool, but no thanks. Complete opposite. They loved it. They could have cared less that they came in last place. It was all about what they did along the way. The journey, the teamwork, tapping into their creativity, doing things that they couldn't do in the school. And I said, you know what? There's something to this. If that's the reaction we're going to get from these kids after coming in dead last place, then I think there might be something. So, DI was a complete failure for four years. And then we had one team in this fourth year. The second year, we had two teams. The third year, we had four teams at Robert College, and I think two teams at uh, Uskadar. Gushal, when did, when did Ebolu finally start? The second year. So we had a couple teams from Ebolu. And DI has grown every year since. It's been, we've been doing this now for, what, about 15, 15 years or so? Really, just for 10 years. And, going the wrong way, check it out. This year, over 300 teams, over 90 schools, and I, that last is 12, 12 cities, not 15 cities. So DI started out as a failure, and is today, I would say, fairly successful. And it keeps growing, it keeps growing in more cities across Turkey. So there's something about this club that is cool that is catching on. All right. So, this was at the DAT, the DI Turk Affiliate Tournament down in Kushidase this year. And that room was just starting to fill up with about, about 2,000, a little over 2,000 people. And when I think back about that first year when I took those four kids to Knoxville, Tennessee, and where we are today, I, I, I get emotional. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is cool. This is something that all educational systems need. So, teamwork. This is a team going through its improvisational uh, 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 challenge. A couple of some Robert College students. Here's also some, a team acting out their team challenge. And we talked about how DI was a complete failure. So the journey of DI is really the journey of DI. It's going through failure and not giving up. So I want to talk about the next few precepts of DI that I find almost more important, just as important, more important than creativity, creative problem solving, and teamwork. And that is process. If you think about it, process really is an analogy for life. It's an analogy for, 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 for the journey. And DI is all about the journey. It's not about the results. If the results work out, it's probably because your journey was very, very productive and very successful. And when you think about life, if we, always, if we think about the end product of life, what is it? Group audience participation. What is the end of life? 
Yeah, and do we sit around talking about that all day? I can't wait to die. Uh, that, that's, 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 that's the end of the journey. We don't. We need to live in the moment. We need to take stock of what we're doing. We need to look at our, journey, our process and say, well, how are we doing this? What is happening to us? Are we working well with the team? Am I tapping into my creativity? Am I living up to my potential? What am I doing? The process is what is important. Number two, risk taking. Unfortunately, in schools, when it comes to classwork and the curriculum, we are a little hesitant to take risks because the implications of taking a risk is that you could get a poor grade. And if you get a poor grade, you might not get the final grade you need to get into Harvard or Princeton or University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, where I went. You've never heard of that, have you? <laughs> okay. So, DI, along with a lot of other clubs, but just in DI, it gives students, it gives team members a chance to take risks in a safe environment. There are going to be no consequences. And when we watch that first TEDx uh, video of, what was it called, the Moon, 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 Moon Shot Factory? and how that whole factory is set up to take risks and to fail. Well, that's kind of like DI. So, we allow you to take risks, and you are going to fail. And like the guy said in the Moonshot Factory, we revel in your failure. We say, you failed, isn't that cool? Yeah. What? I failed, and you're praising me? Yes, I am, because you tried it. You had the courage to do it. And you know what? Now you're gonna get back up, you're going to learn what you did wrong, and you're going to improve it. You are never going to be successful unless you fail. And trust me, I'm 51 years old, I'm almost going on 52 right now, and I can guarantee you that I have failed a million more times and I've been successful. But I'm still happy, remember? I'm the happiest guy in the world. All right? So, if you're going to be allowed to take risks, you are going to fail. And you need to know how to deal with that failure. How many of you think you deal well with failure? Raise your hand. I fail, and you know what? Rock on, baby. I'm gonna bring it on. Good, 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 good. Then you're on the road. It's for those people who aren't quite ready to fail that I really worry about. Because you need to know how to deal with that. You need to, have to, deal, to deal with the emotions that come with it, to pick yourself back up. What do I do to move on to that next step? You need those tools. And I truly believe that organizations like DI, that allow you to tap into your creativity, allow you to learn what, it, what it's like to work on a team, to, to take you through the process and say, process is more important than the result, that allows you to take risks, and thus you will fail. And how do you find the tools to get over that failure? I found that. I just thought it was kind of cool. Uh, take a risk, and you're probably going to fail. So how to fail successfully? Uh, can you do that? Is that an oxymoron? Yeah. I really do think there are ways to fail in a failing manner. Crying, kicking, getting angry, stopping what you're doing. And there's ways to fail successfully. Number one, take ownership. Does that make sense? Take ownership. Take it. Live it. Stick up for it. Say, you know what? I screwed up. That was my bad. I did that wrong. I can guarantee you it's going to lift a weight off of your shoulders. And you're going to be able to move on. Number two, stay humble. Remember that humility is going to get you a lot further than being aggressive or trying to hide your mistakes. And I wanted to put one more on there that I forgot, and that is pointing fingers. It's so easy to point a finger at somebody when they do something wrong. But if we're gonna tell kids that it's okay to fail, we can't point fingers at them and say, <laughs> you can't go there. And if we as adults, this is for the adults in the room, if we figure out how to embrace failure, embrace mistakes, 
and say, you know what? You messed up, but I still love you. I am still going to be with you. I am not going to give up on you. We're not going to point fingers at you. Those kids are going to take that to the next generation, and hopefully the finger pointing is going to stop. Finger pointing doesn't do any good. Do we all finger point, though? Oh, yeah, I do it all the time. Am I humble all the time? No. Ask my students. I can be a real jerk sometimes. Didn't sign up for the late, late bus? You're walking home. All right? Take ownership. Sometimes it's really hard to take ownership of, of, of failure. Yeah? But that's what you need to do. All of these things that came out of DI have allowed me to be the happiest guy in the world. I truly am. Look at the Greek definition of happiness. The joy that we feel striving for our potential. To me, DI says that. It says, strive to do your best. And you are going to fall down all the time. But you're going to pick yourself up, and your buddies are going to help pick you up, and you're going to move on, and you're going to be successful. And I really think that if you try to get into DI and, 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 and maybe give it a try, that Moonshot Factory thing, how many of you like that Moonshot Factory thing? That was amazing. DI, to me, is kind of a microcosm of the Moonshot Factory. Anyway, Destination Imagination, it's a journey. I'm the happiest guy in the world. I want you to be happy as well. Thanks a lot.